What is good, everybody? I hope that you guys are all doing well this Thursday afternoon. I hope that you and your friends and family and loved ones are all safe and happy and healthy as we speak. And I genuinely mean that from the bottom of my heart for each and every one of you. Now, with uh, that being said, I hope that you guys all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. I hope that if you guys were able to take advantage of celebrating with your families safely and with each other's well-being in mind, that you guys did that. And I, I hope that it was uh, a genuinely good time for all of you. I mean that. And um, that aside, I'd like to expand on uh, my last video from a week or two back. And I'm not one of these guys that's just going to put out a video every day or so and hope that somebody listens to me. No, because I know that I only get a handful of views anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But maybe if just one person listens, it'll make a difference. But I digress. Um, there hasn't been a whole lot of madness going on from just regular average everyday Americans like you and me you know we uh, we've been trying to get back to work live our lives maintain provide for ourselves and our families because that's all we really want to do we just want to live our lives but the people in power as always and it doesn't matter we're, we're throwing political affiliation out the window okay the people in power they want to consolidate their power they want to maintain their grasp on that power and so they have a vested interest in making sure that we remain angry at each other because like I said, if we're fighting over stupid shit, then we're not paying attention to all the grimy shit they're doing to line their pockets and to maintain control of their political power. Right? Take for example, my man Paul Gossett, representative in Congress out of Arizona, right? Now I'm gonna paraphrase a little bit here, but nothing that I'm gonna say is not in the tweet that he sent out last week. Um, it, something along the lines of the America First movement is in its infancy, and that there are 75 million of us, and he made it a point to remind everyone that uh, there were Japanese soldiers uh, that kept fighting for decades after World War II had ended. Now, it, it stuck out to me for several reasons, mainly for what he did and did not say. You know, first of all, the America First movement is not in its infancy. Since the inception of our country, it has always been America first. This is not some brand new, fresh out the box thing. As far as I can remember, and I've been alive for four decades now, it's always been America first, so I don't know where the fuck that came from. And second of all, he acknowledges that the current Republican administration only received 75 million votes. He does not go on to elaborate on these... Um, theories of uh, vote dumps and votes being switched or anything like that. Uh, he fully acknowledges that the current incumbent administration only received 75 million votes and he does not disregard in any way that the opposition received 80 million votes. But that's not even the point. And I'm not here to argue about that with anybody. Right? What really bothers me is that he made it a point to let people know that there were Japanese soldiers that maintained fighting for several decades after World War II ended, and he linked to uh, Teruo Nakamura's uh, Wikipedia, I think it was, or an article about him, him and uh, Hiro Inada being the two most famous cases. They, they were both uh, discovered about five months apart back in 1974, right? And with the case of uh, Teruo Nakamura that he linked to, right? This man lived in a hut in an isolated village in the Philippines and nobody told him that the war had ended. And then, five years later, after he gets back to civilization, the man dies of lung cancer. So he spent 30 years living in isolation in a hut, believing that he was still fighting on behalf of the Japanese Imperial Army, only to find out it was all for nothing, that he was hiding in the jungle for nothing. And then he dies five years later after he gets back to civilization. And then Hiro Onada, right? This man, he maintained guerrilla warfare on a small Philippine island for 30 years, killing farmers, uh, raiding their crops, their, their storage, you know, shit like that. And it wasn't that he didn't know that the war was over, no. Many efforts were made to let him know that Japan had it surrendered. But he refused to believe it. So he, for 30 years, 
waged guerrilla warfare on innocent people on a remote island in the Philippines just because he refused to acknowledge reality. And that was the point of Congressman Gossard's tweet. He wants you guys, he wants all of us to ignore reality and continue fighting a battle that has already been lost instead of regrouping and focusing on the next battle because he knows what the next battle should be and it isn't left versus right it isn't democrat versus republican it isn't american versus american the next battle should be us versus them them being the ruling class the people that keep tossing us red meat to keep us angry with one another he wants us to maintain a mindset of continued anger. He wants us to get used to the idea of always being angry at each other. That's all he wants. He doesn't care about anything else except keeping us distracted from what him and his friends are doing. And we can do the both sides thing if you want. It doesn't matter to me. I'm tired of that both sides shit. I mean, like I said, I've been around just over four decades now, okay? And it wasn't that long ago where I remember September 11, 2001. I remember by the end of that day, there was a couple things that were very, very clear. Is that we were coming for the people who done fucked up and did it. And we had each other's backs. It didn't matter where the hell we lived or where we were from. There were Americans who were hurting and they needed us and we were going to be there for them. Now we've fallen a long fucking way from where we were that day to where we are now, where we're fucking bitching over masks and just doing the right thing for one another. What I think is so fucked up about that is that nobody says shit about a business having up a sign that says no shirt, no shoes, no service, but if they tell you to wear a mask when you come in there, everybody wants to lose their fucking mind. But in the meantime, if I walked in there wearing just a pair of boxer shorts, they would kick my ass out. So it doesn't make any fucking sense. This is for the health of one another. But they want us to argue over this stupid shit. It's something just as simple as Americans being there for each other. They want us to keep on bickering and starting shit amongst each other and tipping over store shelves over masks. So we don't see the Kansas City shuffle that they're trying to hustle on us. Now, for all of you who haven't seen the movie Lucky Number Slevin, the Kansas City Shuffle is where they get you painting to the left hand and not noticing that the right is either coming up to sneak you or pick your pocket. And that's what they're doing to us. 90% of the people that we elected to represent us in Congress, in the Senate, yes, and even up to the White House. Right now, it's just a decades-long Kansas City shuffle. They've been doing it ever since they adopted the Federal Reserve Banking System back in whatever it was, 1913, 14, 17, whatever it was. Back during the Industrial Revolution. It's just been a, a century-long hustle on average everyday Americans for us to bleed, sweat, and break our backs just to make their lives better just to give them more money than they will ever be able to spend in their entire lives okay now I'm not advocating for some kind of socialist communist revolution no 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 that's not what I'm saying what I'm saying is is that we've been busting our asses paying into the system for a long time and all they keep doing is taking and taking and taking from us without giving us a return on our motherfucking investment and that should make us more angry than goddamn flags, monuments, fucking reproductive rights, anything else. And now they've got almost half of us being thankful for being under the thumb of the people who are supposed to serve and protect us and are supposed to have our best interest in heart. Fuck that shit is what I say. But now we're coming up on 10 minutes, so if you stuck with me this long, 
I appreciate it. Thank you. Love you. God bless you. Love you. Once again, even if we're all hypocrites and assholes. Peace out.